Right, let's start. So I'm starting out here with some wool, 100% wool, because most of the time you are going to be sewing these handmade buttonholes onto woolen fabric, onto bespoke coats, most of the time. So I decided I'm going to do that today. On the inside here, I have some fusing. Now, obviously, you would want to choose fusing that is the closest to the color of your fabric. You, you can have white or black, for example, so if it's a darker white um, colored fabric, you can choose then the appropriate um, fusing for it. Make sure that when you cut the fusing that you do cut it on the green line as well, so that they match up, because fusing also has a green line where if you pull it diagonally, it's going to stretch, and if you go up or to the side, it will not just like your fabric here so i would recommend being very very careful in that what we're going to do since we're home we're going to heat up the iron put it on maximum now that it's ironed i'm going to take my fusing and make sure that the sticky side is on the fabric side here and the soft side is on the outside so i'm going to take my iron and I'm going to just dab it on top. You can already see the difference. How it's sticking and how it's not sticking. Do not iron around. Just steam it on top. Place it on top. And you already see the seam coming out. That means it's doing its job. The hotter it is, the more steam, the more it will stick because it's a glue. But obviously we do not want to overdo it. Hold it in half, I'm going to press it right here, then I'm going to just quickly sew around, hand sew it, just to hold it all in place. I'm going to do my buttonholes through both sides of the fabric, so it's, I'm going to basically do it as if it was like a thick coat. So if I'm going to sew my buttonhole right here, I'm going to, with my basing thread, I'm going to, th I'm just going to stitch around a bit just to hold everything in place. Now I'm ready to move on to the next step. With a hole puncher, you can just punch a hole right in the top here. And then with your sharp scissors, you can just snip through very, very gently all the way to the end of your line here. We're going to do the overlocking with a regular thread. Normally you have to use a thread that is very, very close to the color that of your fabric. So I should technically use a dark, um, a navy, so a dark blue, but for demonstrational purposes, I'm going to use a white. A very big tip on how to get your thread really nice and strong and avoid it from knotting is to use beeswax. So basically you just pull it through the wax a couple of times, up and down. And uh, what it does is it waxes it and gives it a lot more strength so it does not break and it really does help against all of the knots that sometimes appear when you're hand sewing. So I would only recommend getting beeswax. So after I do that then I just pull it with my fingers just so that any extra little fuzzies can come off and now I feel such a difference. Now I have my needle threaded my thimble and I'm going to start. I'm going to start by poking my I'm going to poke my needle here at the end. Far away, a little bit further away from the buttonhole. Now, from this point, I'm going to go under again 
and come out right at the end, right here. I'm going to come out right here, right where the cut starts. Now it's secured. So I'm going to now with my finger, I'm going to, I'm with my hand, I'm going to hold it here and hold it here. And this is basically my security here. I'm going to now stitch using my um, needle. I'm going to go under and at around a couple mil, four, three mil, I'm going to poke out like this. I'm going to come out. And when I do that, normally I have to turn around like that to actually overlock it. I didn't do that on the first stitch. I just pulled out. But technically you have to do that and then pull. I'm going to do it again, hopefully around the same distance, around three mil, and then pull. So your stitch, basically with this thread, it's supposed to actually disappear. It's an overlocking thread that goes underneath your buttonhole stitch, but it's basically to hold everything in place together. Having the woolen fabric fused underneath helps a lot when doing um, the buttonhole because it already fuses together all of the little threads so that even when I've cut it open here it does not um, yeah it does not show any threads coming out that quickly or anything like that it does not open up quickly it stays pretty firm so all in all the preparation to make the buttonhole does take time but it is extremely useful to do all of the pre preparational steps in order to have a really, really nice clean buttonhole at the end. So here I'm going around the circle part. And keep in mind to keep really, really good distance between all of the stitches. And don't make one stitch further out and one further closer to the cut um, of the buttonhole. Just um, try to keep it as aligned as possible. The more precise, the better. Now when I finish and I come back to the end, what I like to do with my needle, I like to go poke in at the bottom here. And the, between both fabrics, I like to go through and come out around a centimeter further away. Then pull. I'm going to do a little just knot like this. As I'm just practicing, I'm going to just knot it here. But as of this point, you actually can remove it already. This is then what it looks like when it's overlocked by hand. Normally if I'd use the same color you wouldn't actually see the stitch, but you can see that there's no thread sticking out. I have cut off some gimp right here. This is not the best quality gimp, I don't have the really strong one anymore, but this one is a gimp. It's a bit flimsy, so I'd recommend not getting the flimsy quality, I'd recommend getting the very firm, strong quality because it obviously makes a huge difference in your buttonhole. And I also got the silk thread right here. So I did cut off a lot, but the more the better because you do not want to stop in the middle of your buttonhole um, stitching and re-thread. So you definitely want to have enough, but not too much that it's uh, over-exaggerated. I'm going to knot it right here at the end. This does not need any beeswax. It's a silk thread, so it is silky when you do sew with it. So, But do not use beeswax on that thread. Now I'm going to hold this here in place. I'm going to measure. Okay. So the amount I need is basically this is the end of my buttonhole, and I added on a bit extra just to allow me yeah to use it properly without it um slipping out or anything like that i'm going to start my buttonhole now i'm going to poke my my needle in a bit further away again like around a centimeter away from the buttonhole and i'm going to go through the middle of both fabric pieces so right in the middle i'm going to come out at the end right here like this if I think I have too much thread, I can always cut a bit short towards the end. But okay, so we're going to start right here. 
I'm going to do my first stitch and I have to be very consistent so I have to think about this well. I'm going to pull out here right behind the white overlock that I did. The gimp should already be here and now I have to hold everything in place with my thumb. So now I can have this piece straight if I like, out there. So now what I'm going to do, hold everything in place like this and I'm going to surround my needle, lock it and then pull. You always want to pull up to make sure that the knot is on the top because you can always move that later. So I did one stitch and right next to it I'm going to do another one the same spot right here. Turn over and now pull and up. It's a bit flimsy when you start but then once you have control over how you're handling it with your hands it gets much easier. So now I'm going to pull again gently And pull up nice and tight like that you can see my stitches are pretty okay I'm gonna try go on another one turn over and pull then I'm going to continue like this here you can see all the stitches that I've done so far Basically like this, you poke out right next to it, you slide the thread around, you pull, that's it. So this is the stitch that I've done so far and I would like to point out some of the mistakes or some of the things that came up that can happen with anyone. First of all, you see how it got a little bit wonky on the side? You can see the thread right here. Point number two is what can happen is you can get a little knot like that at one point. You see the little knot in there? That can also happen and you have to fix it in the moment. I only saw it one or two stitches later and I did not want to open it up but then I thought I would show you as a demonstration that these knots can happen but you can fix them in the moment so but I left it here to show you but you can fix it third you may think it looks a little bit wonky but that can also be fixed because right now we're going to pull on these gimps a little bit and straighten it out to straighten out the buttonhole we're going to be using this tool right here. I'm going to poke it right here and hold it in place so that it keeps the round shape. Hold it down tight and just pull like this. Don't tug too much because we don't want to pull it out too much but just a little bit and you just work with how you can feel it stretching. And then I'm going to just push it like that in place. Straighten that out. You can see it's puckering a little bit here, but that will go away once I open up all the stitches and once I secure it. So I'm going to push that in like this because afterwards I can iron it all flat. Moving on to the last steps. Now what we want to do is we are going to move our gimp underneath. So we're going to slide it through here, pull it out. We're going to slide this one in here and pull it out like this so it's nice and straight here once we have that now we can lock it all together here at the end so make sure everything is straightened out well last 
touches and so okay that should be it for now because we're still going to press it afterwards and I'm going to stitch like this one end to the next and I know that I have caught um, the gimp underneath as well I'm gonna do one two three four sorry that was just two and here I'm gonna go underneath pull out and now I'm going to secure it here. So I'm just going to go and cross them a few times just to lock them up really, really good. Because afterwards we're going to snip them off and we don't want any gimp coming out anywhere. So nice and firm. This last one I'm going to lock it like that. So that's nice and strong right here. Now I'm going to come back to the other side and poke back out. I should be around the end right here. Normally you can leave it just like this. Or what some people like to do is they like to make the little coil right here, which I'm going to do this time. So I'm going to just coil around the stitch. I like it a bit more strong and a bit more defined, so I'm going to make it coiled up here at the end. When I, when you have finished here, or when I have finished, it should look like this. Well, I'm not completely finished yet, but the stitching part has finished. I'm going to poke right through here again, come back out. And now to secure it, I'm just going to secure here on the spot with a knot. And then something very secure is if you just go through the threads right here with your needle. And since it's so tight, it actually secures super well. Once, twice, you don't have any loose threads popping out anyway. Then from here, I'm going to go out and through the thread, through the fabric, come out here a bit further away. I'm going to pull, not with this, I'm going to pull and snip. So now here, I'm going to cut off my gimp right at the end, like that. Now I can undo the basting thread. Now I'm going to go press it really quick and then we're done. When you're pressing um, or ironing your buttonhole flat, what you want to do is you actually want to flatten this part all the way up to the end, but not this part here. This part you want to have stick out. So you would like to have it come out on the top. But this part you will want to iron flat like this. That is your buttonhole. That is your handmade buttonhole. Nice and clean along the edges. Very nice and clean, everything's taken in. And that's how easy it is to do on some really nice woolen fabric. You can see here's the back, right here. Usually this side is with a lining, but this side is how it's supposed to look like.